Lord, good day and welcome once again. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the privilege we have to just enter into your presence, to come before you this morning, boldly before your throne of grace. We honor you, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you, we glorify you. And yes, Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us first. And we bow right now to give you and you alone all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Well, let's get right to it. The, the, I want to title this message this morning, Who Do You Run To? Now, let us start with the scripture. Hebrews 4.16 let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help, coming just when we need it. Now, in life, all of us, every single person, have got a go-to person, a go-to place, a go-to solution for everything. When my car has problems, I go to, go to my favorite mechanic. If uh, I want to go eat out, there's my favorite restaurant. So, so you've got that one place, that one person that, you, that will be the first person you think of. The first person you think of when whatever occurs in your life. The first person you, you, you want to share something with. If you see something, immediately you, you will say to yourself, so-and-so will like this, will love this, will, will, I wish they were here. Now, when, when your uh, computer goes bananas, you've got your favorite go-to IT uh, specialist. But then I remember the well-known evangelist David Ring asked another question along the very same line. But we always think of things and stuff. But he asked the question, what do you do? Who do you run to when the bottom of your life falls out? Now this is more serious. This isn't just a car that are breaking down, that you can save money and work for again to have it repaired if you're not in a financial state at that moment. This is more than just a temporary thing. What do you do? Who do you run to when the bottom of your life seems to fall out? And people, this may sound, oh, this is, this is bad this morning. But the problem is, this is life. Life is real. Needs are real. But thank God, victories are also real. And, and in his case, he, he, he shared his testimony. Those of you that know evangelist David Ring, he's, he's, he's got cerebral palsy. But he don't hide behind the, 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 the problems or the challenges in his life. On the contrary, he will gladly come up before a crowd of people and says, I've got cerebral palsy, what's your problem? What's holding you back? But he's not allowing his problem or his need or his challenge to hold his, him back. And, and then he shares the story of how he, as a person with cerebral palsy, that at that stage really relied on his parents. Relied on his parents to, to do everything. He can't button a shirt properly. He, he can't dress himself properly. So his parents were the ones, especially his mother, that helped him. And then you get the news. First his dad and then his mom. They've passed away. The bottom fell out of his life. Where to now? Who do you run to now? Oh, it was so precious to me. Growing up and in the house there was a record player. Many of our young viewers will not know this now. And but with the old records and they had the most beautiful gospel records and they allowed him, they taught him how to use this and when that happened I didn't know how to pray and didn't know what to say it's almost like God 
look at me, I've, I've already got cerebral palsy, I'm already reliable on someone, now you take the people that I rely on to help me, you take them away as well. Am I cursed? Are you angry with me? The only thing that he ran to was back to God. He ran to God using the record player, starting to pray, to, to play the the, 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 gospel, uh, the gospel songs over and over, just praising the Lord, just worshipping the Lord. Just getting a new song in there, pushing the hurt aside, pushing the disappointment aside, pushing the doubt aside. But he ran to God. Too often we find that people run to every type of solution but to God. On the contrary, many run away from God. You better think of Jonah. He will most certainly tell you that running from God do not work. The reason people run from God normally, either they are ashamed of something they have done, or do not want to be confronted with the truth of the consequences of their deeds. You must understand this is normally the difference between an adult and a child. As a child you did the wrong things, but you didn't worry about it so much. Then as you grow up, you started to realize back in the days now that, that my deeds, my actions, there's a consequence to it. And when I did something wrong, Mom and Dad, or whoever was the figure of his authority, even in the school, they will hold me responsible. The fact is that we were created to see God, to seek His will in all that we do and all that we face. I want you to look at King David for a moment. <clears throat> I'm reading from the Amplified Psalm 5. Verse 3 says, In the morning you hear my voice, O Lord. In the morning I prepare a prayer, a sacrifice for you, and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. So David knew that his answer, his salvation, lied with God and God alone. He didn't only pray, but he, he says, I wait on you. I wait for you to speak to my heart. Even before his day would begin, he would seek God's face. We are so used to ask others, will you please pray for me? That sometimes we forgot that God wants a personal relationship with his children. When a child is afraid, you or she don't run to his brother or his sister and says, please ask mom if they will help me, uh, please ask them if I may come and get into their bed in the middle of night. Now they run to their parents. They've got a relationship. They feel safe there. They're supposed to feel safe there. It's just a natural thing to do. But the child is afraid to go to his parents. There's something big amiss. There's a problem. A big problem. A child should never be afraid of his parents. Let us continue with King David. In Psalm 5 again, but verse 7 this time. But as for me, I will enter your house through the abundance of your steadfast love and mercy. I will worship toward and at your holy temple in reverent fear and awe of you. Verse 11. But let all those who take refuge and put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever sing and shout for joy, because you make a covering over them and defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you and be in high spirits. Verse 12. For you, Lord, will bless the uncompromisingly righteous, him who is upright and in right standing with you. As with a shield, you will surround him with goodwill, pleasure and favour. But have you seen, have you listened, and have you watched and noticed what you've read? The Bible says, 
I, I come to you, I run to you, I will enter your house, your place of dwelling, but I will enter it, not by what I've done, but by the abundance of your steadfast love and mercy. Do you remember the old chorus that we used to sing? Into thy presence we come, not by the works we have done, but by thy grace and thy grace alone, into thy presence we come. By your grace, by your mercy, because of who you are. Let us take refuge with God. Let us run to Him. There's such a beautiful promise in the Word. Proverbs 8 verse 10. 18, pardon me. Proverbs 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The consistently righteous man, upright and in right standing with God, runs into it and is safe, high above evil and strong. I want to ask you the question again. You alone know, you and God, what challenges you are facing at this very moment. You alone know the things that you say, Lord, how am I going to get through this? I want to ask you this question this morning. Won't you run to God? Won't you run into Daddy's arms? When you allow Him to pick you up, to hold you close, not only to love you, but to look you in the eyes and say, Daddy will take care of this. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, right now, this very moment, you are looking at everyone that are listening and viewing this clip. And you are saying to them, Come, run to me. I'm waiting for you with outstretched arms. I do not care where you have been. I do not care what you have done. I don't care what people say about you or think about you. If you are willing to repent, if you are willing to come back to the fold, I will gladly, gladly receive you back. I'm waiting for you, my child. I love you. I paid the price already. I'm not going, or I don't need to pay something in for the future. I've already done that. I died for you, says Jesus, when you were still a sinner. Been there, done that, paid that. This morning, Lord, may everyone listening look around them and know there is a strong tower. It is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that they can run into because He has paid the price, because of His goodness, because of the abundance of your steadfast love and mercy, they can run into your loving arms. In this few moments, may we stretch out our arms like a small child again. Lift our hands and our arms towards our daddy and says, Father, please pick me up. Abba, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring for me. Lord, I must repent that I, in this week, in this month, maybe in these years, I've run to everyone but you. I repent of that. And I come back to you now. Please take me back in the fold. This is where I belong. And I thank you. And I know that there will be testimonies. That everyone that comes to you will never be turned away. But that you will take them in. Take them back. I honor you. And I praise you. And I worship you. And I give you and you alone all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. The name of the Lord is still a strong tower. Run to Him. Not tomorrow. Not when you feel like it. Now. Right now. 
is waiting. God bless you. Just run it.